Welcome, one and all, to The Late Show. I'm your host, Stephen Colbert. Happy, 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 happy. Happy, happy Thursday, everybody. The Democratic primaries are off and running. So far, we've seen results from Iowa and New Hampshire. Next, the campaign moves on to a caucus in Nevada, which is perfect for Bernie, because he'll fit right in at the nickel slots. Come on, baby needs a new pair of shoes. Because the millionaires and billionaires are refusing to pay the baby a living wage. Come on, let's go. <laughs> now, interesting side note. In Nevada, ties in the delegate allocation process will be resolved by drawing cards. High card wins. <laughs> Little too on brand, Vegas. <laughs> That'll be like Florida deciding its elections by having the candidates wrestle a meth gator. <laughs> but, uh,. The next actual, they're dangerous, those meth gators. They got nothing to lose. I ain't missing. The next actual primary is my home state of South Carolina, the Palmetto State, South Kakalaki, the top shelf Carolina. You know that North Carolina rail liquor. Now, as a native son, I'm going to be on this election like shrimp on grits, like mustard sauce on barbecue, like Confederate flags on more vehicles than I am comfortable acknowledging. <laughs> and I'll catch you up on the latest in tonight's edition of... I have a plan for that. A progressive agenda. Donald Trump's worst nightmare. We're at each other's throats. Corn Pop was a bad dude. They are stone cold crazy. Yuri Rose. To the White House, 2020. With this Now, assuming, <laughs> assuming, <laughs> yeah. Come on. Corn Pop is a bad dude. Now, assuming they don't secede between now and then, South Carolina <laughs> is holding their primary on Saturday, February 29th. That's Leap Day, a day that only exists once every four years, just like the South Carolina Democratic Party. <laughs> now. The South Carolina electorate is a whole new ball game for the Dems. Joe Biden pointed out why. Up till now, we haven't heard from the most committed constituency of the Democratic Party, the African American community. 99.9%. That's the percentage of African American voters who have not yet had a chance to vote in America. 99.8. That's the percent of Latino voters who haven't had a chance to vote. Well, sure, that's because the first two states to vote are Iowa and New Hampshire, <laughs> which are so white you have to go to the supermarket's international aisle to buy pepper. <laughs> now, Biden... <laughs> Biden is currently leading among black voters with 27%. Hey, to all the black voters, I'm Joe Biden, and I hope... You will change this election and vote for Joe, which rhymes with Bo. That's his dog. Come on. <laughs> I'm dying here. Si se puede. Long walk. It was a long walk. Now, the second most popular candidate among African Americans is former New York Mayor Michael Bloomberg with 22%. Now, that sounds surprising. But Bloomberg has been out there in the African American community, shaking hands and frisking babies. <laughs> Bloomberg. <laughs> Bloomberg. It's true. It's true. Gotta check the diaper. Now, Bloomberg has been rising in the polls, uh, but there could be some hurdles for his campaign. In the past, he's been accused in several lawsuits of creating an uncomfortable workplace environment for women, but he won't release women who sued him from their non disclosure agreements. Oh, good. Yet another New York billionaire with a questionable history with women. Next, we're going to find out about his sons, Merrick and Bloom Jr. <laughs> Here's something. Award season is not quite over because we've just learned the winner of the London Natural History Museum's Wildlife Photo Award. Of course, last year's winner was this shot of a marmot, and I'm going to say teaching a fox the choreography from Chicago. <laughs> now, oh, this year... Giddy, giddy. This year, the award went to this photo called Station Squabble of Two Mice Fighting Taking in a London Tube Station. It's an amazing photo, but when I think of nature, I don't naturally think of rodents strangling each other <laughs> on a train station. Really seems like the guy snapped the shot on the way to work. Wait, the wildlife photo is due when? I can't get to Africa by then. 
Hand me a cookie. Fight, fight, fight. <laughs> now. Hey, check him out. Uh, we've got some positive news. China says the rate of new coronavirus infections has been slowing, but the WHO is staying focused on the disease, and that means giving it a more accurate name because coronaviruses are actually a family of viruses that can cause, among other things, the common cold. So if you come down with a cold, a fun prank is to tell people, I've got coronavirus. <laughs> then you can laugh all the way to quarantine. <laughs> the WHO has settled on a new name, and it's COVID-19. Ugh. Don't you hate it when you try to pick a new disease name and the first 18 are already taken? <laughs> COVID-19. <laughs> Big fans of epidemiology here tonight. <laughs> COVID-19 is actually an abbreviation of coronavirus disease 2019, but the name COVID is not sitting well with some people, namely the audio cable manufacturer COVID <laughs> based in Tempe, Arizona. It also doesn't help that their slogan is COVID audio cables, nothing can stop us from transmitting across the globe. <laughs> Said, darn it. Darn it. Darn it's it. tough luck. Uh, it's tough, tough luck. One, tough one with that one. COVID-19 also has hit the high seas with two cruise ships quarantined over the virus. It's shocking. Usually a cruise ship is an immaculate, germ-free environment <laughs> where you can watch a seven-year-old suckle straight from the soft-serve spout. <laughs> the ship most affected is the Diamond Princess in Japan, where passengers are instructed to stay in their rooms for 24 hours a day, which is why entertainment crews have been calling guest rooms to cheer people up. <laughs> Hello, uh, cabin 402. I'm Stuart from the entertainment staff. Hope you're having a princess day. I am calling to walk you through our exciting production of Mamma Mia. Are you ready? Okay. Uh, it's the summer of 1999. Uh, <laughs> Curtain up on 20 year old bride to be Sophie Sheridan. Waterloo. Ha 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 Still there? Waterloo. Oh, Fernando. We got a great show for you tonight. James Marsden is here. And when we come back, I take a look at some Valentine's cards with a friend.